Hello everyone, hi. Uh, I am very happy to see you today for this webinar. Uh, in this webinar, we will see together how to take advantage of the Python API to fully automate, automate your process simulations. I am Nadine Kosefi, Technical Account Manager and Marketing Coordinator at Transvalor. And it is my pleasure today to welcome uh, with me on the floor, my colleague, Sandra Chirubini. Hi, Sandra. Hello, Nadine. Hello, everyone. Uh, then Sandra is in charge uh, for a new department that is dedicated to the user experience and advanced services, uh, and she's the manager of this department. Uh, during this webinar, first, I will start with a small introduction about the transfer, uh, and I will let the floor for my colleague. And before starting, it's, uh, just only some words about GoToWebinar platform and how it works. Uh, using the icon, uh, the orange icon, you can minimize the control panel. Uh, do not be surprised, your microphone will be switched off uh, during the whole webinar. You can type uh, your, your question in the dedicated area here, uh, and we will answer all your questions at the end of this webinar. Okay, and if there is some questions that we don't have time to answer, we will be back to you by email. Now we will see together uh, Transvalors, and Transvalor is an independent software editor providing leading edge solutions for virtual manufacturing. It exists since nearly 40 years. We supply manufacturing industry with process simulation software that gives keys for rational engineering decision making. We provide as well consultancy and services to help you to tackle the new challenges. Here you can see an image of the staff of Transvalor. Then we are very happy to work in a close partnership with our clients. And we work, we work as well with the Mathmin Paritech as a research laboratory. We are located in the south of France, like you can see on this image, in the French Riviera, near Nice. Uh, you are welcome anytime at our offices. As well, recently, we opened several subsidiaries all around the world, for example, uh, in uh, Unit Arab in Dubai, and uh, in several in uh, Dubai, in China, in India. And we have several distributors that help us to distribute our solutions uh, all around the world. Today, more than 1,000 customers around the world entrust our solution. Okay, then this customer uh, work in several uh, sectors like we can see on this image. For example, we have on energy, some of them from energy sector, aerospace, for sure automotive, heavy industry, and we work with close partnership with academics to help us to keep our product innovative and to integrate all the recent, uh, the recent uh, development comes from the research, from research and academics in our software. Now we will see together uh, the platform. Transvalor uh, have an end-to-end -end solution platform that helps you to manufacture from the casting to the fatigue and the life cycle management. Then here we can see a simulation of casting that has been done, for example, with the software Tercast. We can model after the casting, if needed, the rolling or the forging. Here we have an example of a crankshaft forging. We can model the heat treatment. For example, here we see the induction heating that has been realized with same heat. Then a uh, several heat treatment simulation can be modeled. We can see here a simulation of a welding. We have the possibility to model a process like welding, and we have the possibility at the end of manufacturing to study the fatigue and the life cycle management. Here, for example, we saw the crack evolution, and now we are studying the microstructure evolution on the micro scale so microstructure can be studied on the micro scale, like we can see on this video. Okay, this is the, the polycrystal evolution, and you can see the grain evolution on the polycrystal. And it can be studied as well on the macro scale in tercast and cast during casting or in for during forging uh, on uh, macro scale. Now I will leave the floor to my colleague Sandra. Uh, I will switch off my camera, and I will be back at the end during the question and answer session. See you. Thank you, Nadine. Hello, everyone. So my name is Sandra Cherubini. I'm the manager of the Advanced Services and User Experience team. And it's my pleasure today to present you 
the Python API. It's a new feature in Forge NXT 4.0 that has been released in January 2023. So when you work on your simulation, you spend a quite large amount of time creating your simulation project and analyzing the result of your calculation. This operation uh, you perform are often redundant and sometimes very time consuming. So we decided to simplify everything for you. By developing our own API, we give you access to all the features in a very simplified and extremely efficient way, the Python script. So this new feature has many advantages. It's time saving, it's uh, automate, uh, so you have automation, it's going to secure your project um, based on what we call an API. So what is an API? It stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's a kind of software interface that allows interoperability among many systems. It's designed to expose only the user comments. Uh, it's composed of normalized subroutine methods requests. And the pack API we have in Forge is designed to automatically execute any action that you used to do manually by clicking on the interface. Uh, that can be done in a script. So this Python script allows the creation and the calculation of models from scratch with a minimal uh, human intervention and making the process safer against human errors and more reliable. Uh, motivation to uh, to develop the API were to automate the redundant task and saving time to do the interesting task and also to interoperate with external software. There were already some tools that exist in Forge that could already help with uh, to speed up your calculation, so the simulation setup, setup and the post-processing. So for example, workspaces so Workspace saves the configuration of your screen, everything you see. So when you open a new project, your screen is going to look exactly the same each time. You also have the custom actions that uh, automatically configure the view of the interface um, and uh, like showing the faults to repair. So it's an action that allows you to detect immediately the default, the defects, sorry. Uh, and those actions are provided by Transvalor. You can create your own actions. And then you have uh, the macro. So that was the first step to automation. Each action is recorded and can be replayed, uh, but this is limited to the data setup. So Python is the script that we have in Python. They are going to combine all of those advantages. Uh, it can be run without the interface or with the interface. I'm going to show you how that works. And uh, it can be used for the data setup and for the analysis. So let's pick, let's go a bit more into the details on Python. Uh, so Python is a very common language, very easy to learn. You have plenty of information on the web on how to master it. And so the Python we have embedded in Forge uh, NXT 4.0, it's Python 3, uh, 3.8 for those who, who are familiar with Python. And Python supports modules and packages, which uh, encourage program modularity and code reuse. So for an own API, we have developed two packages, TSV setup, which is dedicated to the setup of the analysis, and TSV analysis, which is dedicated to the post-processing. So you can import those two packages uh, when you run a script. And it means also that you can benefit from the full Python package that are in the market um, by also loading your own package into the Forge installation. I'm going to show you an example a bit later where I'm going to use another package, which is the one related to PowerPoint. And if we go a bit deeper on one of these packages, for example, the TSV analysis package, uh, we have here a view on the all the different classes we can find inside. So we most of the time start from the viewer, we can extract the objects, we can uh, have for each update object the name, the number of elements, um, how the, if I have remission, how the element number is going to change from one state to the other. We can have also all the parameters related to this camera, 
the way I want to visualize the um, the interface. We have all the everything related to the result, of course, when I can extract the result um, by name, and then I can change the legend if I want. I would change. I can change the view. We can extract animation. So everything that was done. Uh, where you have a button in the user interface can be done automatically with a script. Once you have done your script, now you want to launch it, of course. So there are three different ways to use the Python script in Forge. The first one is to play in the GUI to keep the control of your simulation. So you have a, a Python console in Forge that will appear. You can execute a full script or some part of your work and you can keep control by manually doing some operations. Then you have uh, a launcher, which is called pythonmodel.bat, which is provided with Forge, and is going to allow you to really run a script uh, without any intervention. So you can drag, drag, and, drag and drop your file directly. And then you can create your own tool also by including in advanced Python script or even programs. So you can generate an executable from A to Z that will uh, have its own user interface. So that's the example we have on the screen here on the right. That's a tool with a user interface when I can minimize the data to input for the user and then it's going to execute automatically what I want uh, it to do. So let's uh, go through a short demo. So we are going to open Forge. I want just to show you how to import a script. So I'm going to load a template, very simple, and I want to study uh, the mesh step. So I'm going to load a billet in an uh, from the store. So the billet is available here. And if we have a look at the surface mesh, we can see that I have some elements, so it's an STL. And here I can load the file from the Python console. So it's a tool that is going to ask me which mesh size I want to put. So let's put 0 0.5, for example. It's very coarse. And I press OK. And it's automatically uh, meshing the billet. And I can run it again. So I can run the script again with a different mesh size at 0 0.2, which is going to be uh, finer. And I press OK and then it's, it's meshing automatically. Then I can continue the different uh, steps, putting the material, etc. So that's for working in Forge. We have also the module launcher. Um, I'm going to run a, um, the spindle tutorial. Oh, so I already have a, a spindle file here, so I'm going to remove it. I drag and drop the file, press enter, and everything will be automatically created. So it means importing the billet, importing the dies, set up in the press. I have everything that is automatically uh, done here. Project is saved, and then I can come back to Forge and open the spindle. So here I go in Forge. I can open the project that I have just saved. And then I have access to the different uh, stages of the analysis. So if I go in process, three stages has been set up. Uh, we have here with the different tools that are loaded, the upper die and the lower die are automatically uh, loaded. So then the analysis is ready to run. You can just run it and do your post-processing after. So if we want to list a bit uh, the setup what we can do on the setup of your project. Any operation that were carried out on by the GUI can be automatized. You have a function that is related to that. So when we speak in terms of process, we can manage cases, add stages, load a template. When it goes to the part definition, we can import and export geometries. We can uh, mesh according recommendations. If you know that this billet must be meshed in this way, because you want to do remeshing, et cetera, you can make sure that the user is following the recommendations. There are other things we can do more advanced. For example, I'm working currently on 
finding the part in line automatically from a part without having the dice uh, geometry. So here I'm going just to use the geometry of the part to design the dies and also the preforms. So that's the kind of thing we can go uh, really further than just having importing the, the part. Speaking about dies, we can mesh them with uh, mesh boxes automatically created. You can define the press, of course, and we can also think maybe at a tool that will allow to design, or not design, create the MPFX file, the multipass file, in an automatic way from an Excel document, from a picture, from whatever you have that explain your workflow and how the dies are, are moving. And then you have all the parameters that are related to the computation, the global parameters such as the time step, minimum, maximum, how to manage the storage, etc. If you have some recommendations and know-how that you want to apply to your simulation, you can make sure that it's going to be used by all the users. So the goal is really to automate, visualize and interoperate um, in, your, in your simulation process. So let's go through another demo. Um, we're going here to uh, have a look at the script. So I have the two packages that I'm going to use. I'm creating a process with a ch uh, one case, which is a two paces, that's the name. It's a reduce, it's a rolling analysis here. Uh, I want to work on the size of the billet. So I'm going to ask to the user to provide two information, the length and the width. Uh, the billet is a rounded cube with all the parameter about the mesh, etc. All this is already set up. And of course, we assign a material to the billet. Then we define the roles. So you have the lower role, the upper role, the manipulator also. It's uh, based on a box automatically generated. There is no geometry here in advance. And then we have all the param... Oh, for the press, we have the multi-pass file, the MPFX that is uh, automatically assigned to this analysis. And then we have all the parameters uh, on the computation, like friction, heat transfer, and uh, temperature, how, what is the time step, etc. So in the script, I have everything that is defined. So I open Forge, I go directly in the Python console, I load the script and execute it. So here, the Python script is going to be automatically loaded. It asked me for the billet side because that's what I want to study. So here we put uh, 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 the size of the billet is 50 millimeter and I get my result in a few seconds. So you see less than seven seconds, I have the analysis that is created. The material is assigned. We have the lower role with the press definition, who is the master die, who is not we have the MPA fix file and the project is saved. And now I say, okay, I want to do another case with a different billet. Uh, so I'm just going to change the size of the billet, not the length, but this, uh, the width. Uh, so it will be now same length, but uh, it will be 57 millimeter for the size of the billet. So here I put uh, 57 and here seven seconds later, I have the analysis that is ready to run. Everything is adjusted based on the size of the billet. Uh, with the adjust function that you have in Forge, I'm able to uh, adjust all the tool and I have a second project. So it's very easy for me to define different variants of the same analysis by changing one or two param parameters in a very fast way. Then here I can just run uh, the two simulations and then do the post-processing. So in terms of post-processing, what we can do is here again, every function that you have in the user interface of Forge can be done via a function. So we can visualize, uh, manage the viewport, generate animations, create plots, customize the legends. And then we, of course, want to spend some time in analyzing the results. So we can identify the defect, uh, the underfilling, the folds, based on your recommendations, you can think about a function that will automatically warn the, um, the user if there is something that to be careful about, like there is an underfilling in this area. You can maybe compare your obtained geometry with the idealized geometry, see if it's still in the tolerance, 
even if it's not exactly the same geometry. And of course, you can export all, several information. We can generate reports automatically and we can export results in other file formats if then you want to use them in, a, uh, in another tool. So here again, I'm going to run a short demo. Uh, it's a post-processing that has been done just on the case we have seen before, on the uh, rolling example. So this time I have the result that has uh, been uh, running. I can load them in Forge. So I'm going directly to the analysis step. I just want to show you how that look for those who doesn't know this tutorial. Uh, we have two passes of the billet inside the rollers, inside the, yeah. Um, and now I'm going to load my script. So it's, there is a first one that does the post-processing. So I'm going to change the view in the tool. Uh, here I have focus, I'm focusing on the contact between the billet and the dies, the equivalent strain. I have two plots. One is for the exchange due to friction and the force Z that is on the true, uh, uh, on the true roll. Um, so that's the first step. But then I want to generate a report. So create a PowerPoint with different information. So I'm just going to run the script and it's going to take pictures, put them on a PowerPoint. We can see that the report is generated. And now I have a report that I can open and show you that contains several uh, slides. Uh, for each slide, I have a picture. I have the information. The title is based on the result I'm seeing. So we have some text that is added. So here it's increment number 10. We have different uh, pictures. We have the graphs and I can extract as much as information as I want. So here I was thinking about the temperature and um, here it's the last, the temperature for the last increment, number 28. So here I'm using a package that is not provided by our own API, but it's uh, something common in Python. It's the PowerPoint package that allow me to then extract information from Forge using the uh, Python API and then put everything in a PowerPoint. And here I master everything. I can create as much text as I want. I can put your logo. The goal is I can extract animations, put them as a video inside PowerPoint, of course. So here I can generate really the first report in a very short way. And then as a user, and when you or once you have analyzed your uh, analysis, you can really go deeper in, the, in your report and um, put additional information. So it's, it's very something um, very smooth in the workflow. And the goal is really not to that you spend minutes and hours to extract pictures, etc. And then the next step after you have done uh, your first script is to create your own tools. So you can create your own, your own tool that is adapted to your needs. There are an infinity of possibilities on what can be generated. So here we have a short example that is uh, dedicated to the people doing hot rolling. Um, here we are going to have the information about the billet, the material, the dies. The amount of input is very short, so we want something that is very productive for the user. It's time saving and it avoids human errors. This we have a customer that has already uh, have done it. So um, that is going to speak about it at the end of the webinar. But this customer, Rina, has accepted to present you what he has done also on his side uh, based on the Python API. So here I'm going to show you this auto rolling setup. So it works in this case in Forge. I'm going to load the template. Uh, that's the starting point. But of course, all this can be also automatized and included in the executable. So that's the way we have to think about the tool. So I'm going to the Python console. I load this uh, auth rolling tool. There are two files here. One is the UI. It's for the user interface that I have created. And then you have also the information, the PY file, which is all the methods and functionalities behind that. So I'm going to load the UI. We can see that uh, now that's the minimum data to enter. I have even put my own logo. So you have the Transvalor logo here. 
and you have some information. So it can be a select a file, put a value, pick a box. So you have plenty of uh, of possibilities in terms of user interface to make it quite user friendly. So here we are selecting the material, uh, put the initial temperature, and then we have the roles that need to be defined. So here on purpose, I'm putting, you will see something quite big. I'm playing uh, a lot with this tool. The two roles are identical for the exercise, but we can put whatever we want. So you will see the diameter of the roles is pretty big. Uh, the linear velocity here, it's five millimeter per second. We will see that it will be automatically calculated as a, a rotation speed because that's what normally Forge needs as the setup for the analysis. So here we simplify also the way for the user for not doing all this calculation on his own, but he just needs to put classical data, linear velocity, and that will be automatically calculate, calculated based on the size, uh, the diameter of the, of the wall. So here it takes a bit more time than before, less than two minutes to uh, run this, to, 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 to have the setup ready. So I have speed up a little bit the demo. Um, and we will see that we have all the information that are automatically loaded, created, and the analysis is ready to run uh, once it's done. So here we have uh, the very big rolls, that's what you see, uh, and the billet in the middle. The mesh size has been respected. It was a coarser mesh for the billet than for the walls. That's what I have set up. And uh, if we go deeper in each tool, each object definition, we have the material that is automatically assigned. You have the uh, press that is defined with the rotation and what is the rotation axis, different for the lower roll and the upper roll. And we have the pusher with the correct direction. Um, just to show you how it will look like once it has run, we can go in animation, preview kinematics, and then it's going to just uh, preview where we can see the two walls that are uh, rotating. Then the user can easily uh, save, uh, the project is already saved. He can easily run the simulation and do the post-processing. And tomorrow, if he has another, wall size, it can just change the diameter easily, create the analysis again, and run it again. So now that you have, we have covered um, the different steps, so how to launch an analysis, how to create your setup, how to do the post-processing, um, in case that you are looking for to try on your own, you have access to uh, documentation, of course. So there is the Forge online online help that has a pages a page, sorry, dedicated to uh, Python API. Very well documented. Everything is very well described. You then have the Python uh, guide with all the functions that we have created from our packages, with the methods, what is the arguments to put, etc. It's available in the installation of Forge, of course, and you have some examples. So for the demo today, I have used, for example, a script based on mesh all rigid die with user mesh. Uh, you have the spindle example also. So uh, you have all the data here to start. If you want to try on your own and find some indication, you can use those scripts that are uh, also the, um, documented. And of course, we do training sessions, so we can help you to understand how everything is working and uh, train you on, on this uh, new functionality. And if you want to do, once you may have done your first script, we can also here to help you to create your own tool. So Transvalor has created a new department, so the advanced services. It's a team dedicated to the customization and personalization of solutions. So we can sit with you understand your processes, and we adapt the tools to your specific usage. So that's where you're going to have an added value, because the goal is to simplify your workflow uh, and remove all the recurring tasks you may have. We can also automate the setup and the post-processing of the analysis, as we have seen today, with the Python API, but not only. We can think about other things that can happen, as we can use another language, um, another way of working, if you want to work on the web, that's also something we can help you with. 
And then we can, of course, optimize the integration and interoperability of all the products of your production chain. So the goal is not only to work with the transvalo tool, tools, but to help you to really um, engage with all the tools you have when you do you design a part, not only the manufacturing step, but it can also be the structural uh, analysis, etc. So we are really here to help you to uh, get uh, the better usage of the tools that you currently have on your table. So I thank you for your attention. I think it's the time for the questions. I don't know, Nadine, if you have already received some questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Sandra. Then, yes, uh, thank you everyone for joining this webinar. Today we have more than 100 uh, customer and uh, prospect as well. And we have several questions. I will start uh, by uh, okay by the first one. Uh, is this Python script available in uh, library, or we need to create it? I think one so of some ideas. some examples are provided, but uh, we can. You have to create your own scripts based on what you want to do. And of course, we are here to help you to to do this uh, or to go through all those steps. Okay. Thank you. As concerning as concerns the post processing and manipulation of results info, is it possible to implement a control? For example, if epsilon is less than a critical epsilon, uh, do some action uh, or else? Uh, yes, that's something we can do. Uh, we have access to all the results that have been calculated, so we can mm -hmm. check the maximum value, minimum value, and if there is something that doesn't match with uh, um, what you are looking for, let's say a threshold, you can uh, say, warn the, the user, put a pop-up saying, hey, there is something wrong with your analysis. So that's the kind of thing you can do. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Sandra. Is it possible to have the webinar demo scripts, data setup, post-processing, and a specific tool? Uh, yeah. Is, can you, okay. Just, then, just, yeah. just send me an email. <laughs> Okay, then Sandra, with pleasure, we'll send the, okay, we have the email uh, of the person. Okay, then yes, it will be a pleasure that we will be back to you and we will send you some examples. Okay, yes. And as well, if you need any specific, uh, then you, we can go continue uh, discussing by email about your specific need. Thank you. Is it uh, possible to link more recent Python version, uh, a version that is present than sleep? 3.8.1, the one that we have today, to the Python console. Can we use another Python version? Um, you have to be careful. You know, that's the point with Python. You have to make sure that when you uh, mix your packages, etc., and the installation is going to run smoothly. So far, I didn't get any issue. I have included a lot of packages on my side, on my machine. Works very well. But you have to be careful about the, the different versions. Okay, uh, thank you. The graphical user interface shown previous for the rolling was created with Forge methods or another external library? Uh, it was created with Qt Designer, which is another package of Python. Uh, Qt Designer is available inside Forge, so it's something you can also use to generate your own interface. Can you edit the scripts with Jupyter? Um, yes. So, well, I haven't tested it, but it's something uh, that can be done. Uh, you can, with Jupyter, create your own uh, book, and then that will run automatically the script that is behind, because the packages you have in Forge can be uh, then included in your Jupyter installation also. So, yes, it will work. Okay, thank you. Can we use Python scripts to define user variables? Um, so the user vi variables itself is working with Fortran. Uh, so that doesn't yeah. change because we only manage the user interface. What we can do is then manage the result from a user variable. But those two things stay uh, separated for the moment. So it's still going to use Fortran for the user variables. Okay. Thank you. I am currently using Forge 3.2. What is uh, the upgrade pass to 4.0? This will come back by email. <laughs> I, 
Yeah, yes. it will come back uh, yeah, for, by email because uh, even by uh, orally it will not be so so easy to answer this uh, this kind of uh, of a question of question. Uh, okay, uh, one minute. Okay, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, about the user variables and the person added, then for example, he want to develop the die life prediction. Then I will I will comment this one. Then as Sandra told you, then. Uh, uh, user variables we keep to develop them by using by for by Fortran. Uh, we have already some user variables dedicated to die life. Uh, okay, and do not hesitate if you need um, a help even for creating user variable. We can help you without Python to create your own user variable. Okay, uh, can we extract the element nodal integration point results? Uh, yes, yes, that's the data that is available on, well, depending how it has been calculated by the solver, some results are available at the element level, some other at the node level, but we can map the result between those two different uh, locations. So yes, we can extract the, uh, the element values. Okay, and use them as CSV file or, or even make some... Yes. Yeah, we can export uh, all those information. If you want to use them later on another tool, you can uh, then export them as the format you want. I have another question. Hello, is it possible to perform optimization analysis with Python API? Um, when you speak about optimization in the sense of Forge, the answer is no for the moment, but that's going uh, something that will happen in the next release. Um, we want to extend, th this is the first version of uh, Python API, but of course it's going to be enriched and extended in the coming versions and it's planned that the optimization will be part of it. But yes. you can see that mm -hmm. it's already pretty easy to, def to generate some uh, uh, design of experiments pretty easily, even if it doesn't use the powerful optimizer that is in Forge. Uh, as well, I would like to add uh, as a comment that the uh, optimization has been integrated in the Forge NXT 4.0 and the NXT uh, graphical user interface. And we work a lot on the optimization analysis. And today it is easy uh, to make analysis. And we have, uh, for example, we make uh, uh, we can plot uh, we can plot the minimizable function of different parameter to make and uh, to see the influence of the parameter on the optimization. And then uh, I invite you to uh, to to use 4Inch NXT 4.0 and to try the new model of uh, optimization. Okay, is it possible to import meshes from other software like ANSYS with uh, the uh, with the API, with the Python API? Uh, yes. So if it's not a format that has been um, supported by Forge, we can create a function that will turn it into something that is. Uh, in that case, a, a DO or may format that the one that Forge can understand. So that just understand what is coming from whatever software, make sure that uh, Forge is able to understand it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I ha we have another technical question. We'll see. What is the mathematical operator to compare two results in, for, in Python in, uh, in post processing? Then so we want to compare two results in for because they tried it looks uh, smaller or bigger but it doesn't mm. work do you know this one um i, I we we have to check your script uh, <laughs> it can be, because it can be different thing it can be yeah, sure. it's, uh, it's a float data etc so i'm i'm um i'm going to call you <laughs> we can have a okay. look together that way be easier yeah exactly uh, apart from geometry and material setting, is it possible to use a Python for importing, for example, the residual st stress states to a part? Uh, yes, that's uh, importing information. Um, that's the thing we can uh, we can do. Okay. Uh, someone asked us is there, if it is available a user manual for uh, the Python API. Yes, there is a, a short PDF document that explains every function and especially the arguments, what you can have uh, once you have run it, etc. It's available in the in the installation, in documentation. Uh, you can find it. 
and it's very useful that sort of my bible to work uh, today okay. uh, we have another question the macro scripts are not made with python or not that you show us uh, no it's another language um, that's uh, so so it, it's something different Uh, can we uh, fetch can we fetch a grain analysis uh, using Python in report? Then can we uh, maybe can we follow the grain flow analysis using mm. Python in the report? Yes, if it's a result that is available during the different during the analysis, it's something we can extract um, and put it in a report. So it's going to be two different steps. First, getting the uh, the, the flow analysis, the, the grain flow, and then put it in a report if we want. Hello, we can launch several simulations via, via batch using the Python API. Uh, yes, so I haven't spoke, I haven't shown you how to do, launch the calculations, but that's something we can do um, uh, currently with the um, it's 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 just starting uh, the simulation in a normal way, and that can be included in the Python script. So that that that's possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, if we forget and user variable in pre-processing, then we forget to define the user variable in during pre-processing. Is it possible to extract post-process the results for that missed user variable in the analysis mode? Uh, depends the way you have created your analysis. If it's mandatory that your user variable, the result you are looking for, is calculating during with, by the solver, uh, I would say no. But if it's a result that is coming from the stress level, the strain, whatever result that is calculated by default, yes, you can do it after uh, via Python, getting the result in the at the element level, node level, and do whatever formula you want to do. Okay, thank you, Sandra. Regarding the report generation that you showed, is the script available in the library? Uh, no, so that, that's one I created myself uh, because it's done with, you see, all the Transvaal logo, et cetera. So it, it can be adapted to, uh, in, to your own way of working. Here, we're just to show you the potential of this functionality that can be pretty useful to save time. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any packages you have tested which should be uh, looked at or some recommendation uh, what works well with Forge? Uh... Um, what I have loaded uh, the, the, here again depending on what to do so I have loaded the one for PowerPoint uh, yeah PowerPoint I have loaded one to do uh, it was more mathematical stuff you know, to work with arrays, etc. cetera. Um, one of my colleagues is currently doing uh, AI, artificial intelligence. So he has also the package of Python that can be included inside because if one day you want to include that with your forge analysis, that will also work. But with the default installation, you have everything to start uh, to do basic script, I'm going to say. And it's only when you want to move further that you can include some packages. So by default, you don't need to change anything in your installation. It's working very well. Nothing is missing by default. Can we bypass uh, that, bad, uh, that bad file or uh, to launch the script? Do we have access to the Python API from the network, even local? So you need Forge that be installed somewhere. So it can be on the network or local, but it cannot just run run just like this okay because behind you have forge that is going to run so you still need a forge installation somewhere to be able to ping to uh, when you're going to launch your script but yes you can run without any user interface because uh, well that's the way it's, it's also planned to be used to have something that is very efficient okay thank you uh, is it possible with the Python API to define a workspace for all the users and for all the projects? Uh, yes, you can choose carefully what you want to show to your user and they uh, can be uh, launched at the beginning and that's the way they're going to work. Okay. 
Perfect. Uh, can we, uh, okay, can we use the Python API to open CAT software like SOLIDWORKS, CREO, CATIA, modify the, CA, uh, the CIO uh, and export parts to the force setup of model? Uh, that's a good question that needs to be investigated. <laughs> so exactly. We need to check if SOLIDWORKS has something to communicate with Python, for example. Um, I th there is the optimization, depending on what you want to do, but uh, just for your info, the optimization module in Forge is able to open SOLIDWORKS and run an optimization on the, uh, the, yes, on the CAD. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a, there is someone who's, who told us that SOLIDWORKS has a Python API, then uh, already okay, one of okay, our... Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the info. <laughs> so it means that, yes, if they have a Python API, we will be able to uh, communicate with them. And that's something to try. Very interesting. Okay, and thank you to, uh, thank you, uh, to the person who for SOLIDWORKS information. <laughs> okay. And then yeah, let's look uh, let, let's look uh, in deep and see how uh, then for sure yeah it must work uh, since both of them mm -hmm. have that. yeah okay good uh, we still we want to, uh, okay we want to understand the automation of shrinkage of every operation due to the heat exchange and hot forging simulation uh, uh, then you want to understand the, you want to automatize maybe the analysis of the shrinkage okay. that you have during forging uh, after heat treatment. Then oh, okay. Then, yeah. So that, for that's me, yes, it's a post-processing. Yeah, then it is a post-processing, then yes, we may, and even you can make uh, as well maybe a Python API script with post-processing and analyze uh, analyze uh, even the difference and the shrinkage bef uh, from the, for, for your initial geometry and the one obtained after heat treatment. For, yeah, that, it is possible, yes. Uh, we will run the simulation using 30 degree symmetry model. Okay, can we extract the result for full three for full 360 degree uh, model? Uh, yes, for, for yes, you, you have the notion of symmetry. Python. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, even without Python, it is already today. If you have a symmetry and you want to see the result on full uh, 300, you can have the results uh, then on the full parts. And if you want to to automate, automatize this, so Sandra, I imagine then it is a yes for sure, yeah. Yes, so the Forge already provides you the functionality yeah. to visualize exactly. on the full part. And if you want to extract the result, maybe what you want to do is then replicate the result for all the different, uh, for the full part, just only the 30 degree. Then we can have a function that will uh, rotate the result and make sure that at the end you have a, a full mesh with complete results over uh, uh, the full part. Thank you everyone for this webinar. We already uh, had uh, three minutes more because we had a lot, a lot of questions. It, uh, I want to, at the end, I want to invite you, uh, Sandra, can you please? Uh, yes, then we want to invite you to, to the, next, the webinar. next webinar, exactly, that will be as well dedicated to the Python API and this time uh, the hostess are from Rina uh, Industry, from an, a client of Italy, who already take advantage of this Python API and we uh, to how to create a web-based automatic setup of hot rolling simulation then uh, using Forge stationary solver and taking advantage of the Python API. Uh, this webinar will be held on 13 April at uh, 11 a.m. Then we will be happy to invite you if you are more curious and want, you want more information and see a testimonial of how a client uh, take advantage uh, of this Python API, I invite you to join this webinar. Then thank you everyone. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.